How do you make millions in the stock market? You invest in people, the disruptors, the innovators, the people who recognize that the world is changing and they facilitate that change. I've talked in the last two videos about who those people are in the past and who I think they are in the future. And I hope you absorb that. But I want to give you one more opportunity to recognize you do not need to be chasing interest rates. You do not be need to be worrying about Fed policy. You need to be focusing on who is going to make the world a better place. And these are the people who are into artificial intelligence, machine learning, quantum computing, and curing our problem of our medical system is broken. Our cybersecurity system is in, in jeopardy, and we are deglobalizing. If you will focus on those things, the change in the world, and the people who are going to make those changes, you can make yourself extremely wealthy. It's not chasing Wall Street. It's getting in front of Wall Street. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. I've been in this investment game for a long time, and I'm happy to say I learn something new every day. And I think the revelation I've had of most recent is reflected in the last three videos that I've done, is that if you can determine what's going to happen next, what major change is going to happen in the world, you can get in front of it and you can identify the people who are going to do it, particularly with the advent of the internet, that you can put up a, a Google alerts on a biotech and CRISPR, and, and it'll give you every article that's written about it. And if you want to do new inventions in cannabis or or solar panels, you can be informed on a daily basis of anything that is being written on it, and thus you can stay ahead of it. And then you can buy books that that give you insights uh, that require some reading and some in-depth reading, which guarantees that if you do it, you'll be a five percenter because 95 per the set percent of the people won't do it. So you can get ahead of the game and, and you can get ahead in the game in the, in the respect that uh, Wall Street, it doesn't look that far in the front. They can't. They have, they're, they're on a 90-day bonus schedule, and they have to uh, only be watching what's happening now and what's going to happen the night next 90 days. They can't be bothered with what's going to happen in two years. So when, some, when people like Cornelius Vanderbilt uh, ventures into shipping and railroads, they don't pay any attention to him, didn't uh, back in the uh, 1800s, nor did they pay any attention to John D. Rockefeller, who was, in, I believe he was up in mid-state Ohio trying to pump oil, or no, he was, he was selling kerosene, that's what it was. They didn't pay any attention to him. And then uh, in, in the later, they broke him up because he, he controlled the gasoline industry in the whole in the whole United States and and the world, and then there was Andrew Carnegie, who recognized you could take iron oil, iron ore, and turn it into steel, and he built built an industry. Wall Street didn't pay any attention to that, and then Henry Ford. We all know Henry Ford's story. He didn't really invent the automobile; he invented the assembly line, and and Wall Street said that isn't going to work. Uh, the streets, the streets are okay in the city, but they're mud outside. They're, those those automobiles aren't going to work. That many people isn't going to buy them. They were innovators. They were they they had far vision. And then it, when you, if you bring it back up into my lifetime, and you've got Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and Sergey Bream and Larry Page and Jeff. Uh, Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg. These were all people with a vision. We all know the story of uh, of Jeff and McKinsey getting in a car and leaving Wall Street and going to Seattle to to, to start a book uh, uh, selling business in this new thing called the World Wide Web. And we know about the two Stanford students who did a project on what search would be, and the professors raved about it. That's that's a wonderful thing, but how are you going to monetize it? And uh, 
Larry and Sergey said, we don't have any idea how you would monetize it any more than Mark Zuckerberg um, had any idea how he would monetize his Facebook that he, he created for uh, the Harvard students. But they had a vision, and that vision then took them into the future. And if you will do your work to say, okay, what's the next change, and, and what's, who, what's it going to take to make it happen, and then search again with Google uh, search alerts, you can can, you you can pick your subject. If, if you want it to be solar panels and wind power, you can pick your subject and you can find the innovators and you can learn about them long before Wall Street will because, again, they're worried about the next 90 days. They can't be bothered with the next five years. So they don't know who, who Jennifer Doudna is and they don't know who Emmanuel de Carpentier is or George Church or the guy's name I can't pronounce, uh, Frank Zing, um, and, and, the, and their work in, in CRISPR. I doubt if you have a financial advisor uh, that works for any of the major firms and you ask them, what do you know about CRISPR? They would say, uh, isn't that a cracker? <laughs> they don't know about it. So understand the money is to be made by getting away from it and getting in and, and investing in the future. And I just really encourage you to read books and then and then study and then gr join a community where if, if it's just five guys, five guys and three girls who sit down at Starbucks every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. and talk about their interest, they're, they're, they're interested in cannabis. Maybe you won't be in Starbucks. Maybe you'll find a, a, a weed house or something. I don't know. But it should be a game, a, a team sport, and you should work with other people. I invite you to, to join our community. Our community is best of us investors. We call it a tribe, but we're changing the word to community because it's a little bit more receptive and, and people know what a community is. They know it's, they go to church to be a part of a community. They go to the synagogue, the temple, and or, or they, they, they go to the rotary, or they belong to some service group. That's what a community is, people of like mind. Now, what's changed is you don't have to drive to it. You can just open your computer up, and you can enter a chat room. That's really what it is, and exchange ideas. And that's what I want to do. I want to become the everything store. You see those plaques over there. I'm a CFP, a CHFC, and a CLU. I basically worked in the area of the six areas of financial planning. This is only, investing is just one of them. There are multiple more, and there are categories within the investing category, such as you got to have a cash reserve. Then you've got to have of funds for retirement and maybe for education. And there are, there are different investment products in that. And then if you're young, the, the, the number one thing you want to do is start a Roth IRA. And that is a fund that you can put $6,000 into once you start working, once you have earned income, and it grows tax-free. And if you will invest by investing in the tycoons of the future, the, the Jennifer Doudnas, the George Churches, the uh, Jason Hongs, and, and the Alex Kemp's, the people who have a vision for the future and are in a position to make it happen. You and I can have a vision for the future, but we can't raise capital. We can't raise a billion dollars to get our idea off the ground. Well, these people can, and they are, and that's who you want to invest in. Again, don't pay any attention to this inflation thing. It's going away. It was manufactured. <laughs> Again, if I gave you $9 trillion and you went through and spent it in two years, 
Would your lifestyle change? You bet it would. Would you drive the prices up in the grocery stores because you went in there and bought it? Of course it would. But once it's flushed through, everything comes back to normal. We made some mistakes. We made some mistakes that were, were, were facilitated as a result of the worst thing that's happened to our world. And that was the coronavirus. And we've got to get on top of it. We cannot allow this monkeypox or these variants to continue to grow. So there will be a flood of money going into biotech. And I've recognized that. And Emmanuel Carpentier and, and Jennifer Doudna have recognized that. And they're going to get filthy rich because they are going to be the tycoons. They are going to be the Cornelius, the, the, the Cornelius Vanderbilts and the Andrew Carnegies of the 2020s. Yeah, that's what's going to happen because they invented it. They, just like Andrew Carnegie, um, probably had a lot to do with the invention of change, taking iron and turning it into steel. That's what's happening in our medical field. And it's being, Andrew had to, you know, mix the iron and the steel and the coke and, and, and all that. They're using artificial intelligence and machine learning now to do this. And it's going to change our world. So get in front of it. I think this will be my last video in this series, unless I find something else that I need to talk about. But I'd like to talk to you. I'd like you to share your ideas, particularly if you've got some insights into these changes that are going to happen. You work in the industry. You have some information that I don't have. You understand terminology that I don't understand. If we put our heads together... Just think how much smarter we'd be. Wow, that sounds like artificial human intelligence. Wow, I think I just discovered something new. Not really. Talk to you again tomorrow.